Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I'd like to show you how to make this my favorite sports team poncho. This is made in your favorite team's colors plus a little bit of white and a little bit of black and it's a lot of fun to make. I'm going to show you step by step. Um, before we do that, if you could hit that little subscribe button if you haven't done that already, that way you won't miss the sequel to this. Um, or any of the other offerings that I'll be um, offering on my channel this fall and this winter. I have a lot of fun things lined up and you're not going to want to miss out on any of it. Um, for this project, I use the Marley Birds Red Heart Chic Sheep Yarn. Um, this is 100% wool. This is a worsted weight yarn. It's on the lighter side, but um, if you don't want to use this, you want to use your favorite acrylic, that would be a uh, probably an excellent substitute. Just make sure that you're careful on your hook sizes. Um, for this particular project, I used four of color number one, which is the red in my case. Um, the yellow was color number two. I used three scans of that, plus one scan of white and one scan of black. And that's what you're going to need. The conversions will be in the written pattern, which is available at my Lovecrafts store online so you can just check the um, link or the, the video description below for that link uh, should you be interested in that I really do suggest that you follow along with the written pattern just so that you're not confused at any point but anyway let's go ahead and get started let me give you some detail stats on this yarn that I'm using I'm using um, the Red Heart Chic Sheep by Marley Bird which is a wonderful favorite yarn of mine this is a hundred percent wool. This is a medium or number four size yarn. Um, in the UK, I believe they call this Aran weight yarn. Although it is on the lighter side, it's not as heavy as some, but it is still a number four. And each scan has 186 yards or 170 meters of yarn, 3.50 ounces and 100 grams. Okay, so just to give you that information in case you need to, you know, translate that into a different type of yarn. And let me also add, you're welcome to use 100% acrylic yarn, such as the Red Heart Super Saver. I actually used some of that and some of the Caron One Pounder yarn from my original sample. Um, it does work quite well, although it does add a particular stiffness to the fabric. So you need to keep that in mind. If you're looking for something with more fluid, uh, drapey fabric, I would go more for the Chic Sheep. If you're looking for a stiffer garment, the acrylic will work well for that. You're also going to need a crochet hook, size I, or 9, or 5.50 millimeter, or whatever size that you require to meet gauge. That's very important since we're making something to wear. Um, it's more important that your gauge is in the ballpark with the gauge used for this project. You're also going to need a yarn needle for hiding loose ends, of which there are going to be many, and a pair of scissors handy. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. To begin, we start with a slip knot, and now we are going to chain 90 chains. After crocheting the 90 chains, we want to be careful not to twist the chain because we're going to join to form a ring to the first chain. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the hook in and join with a slip stitch like this. Slip, stitch, chain one as we begin round one and we're going to single crochet in the first 44 chains. After those 44 stitches, we're actually not going to do anything different. Just continue crocheting one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. On round two is actually where I'm going to begin doing something a little different after um, 44 stitches. But for now, let's go ahead and just single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And you will have 90 single crochets when you finish this round. After you've single crocheted in each chain around, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet, just like this. Now be careful as you go around that you don't count this stitch, which is just the join as a stitch, okay? So go ahead and chain one, 
Now we're going to begin round number two and we're going to start by working a single crochet in that very first stitch that we where we joined and you're going to do that until you have 44 single crochets so go ahead including this first stitch crochet 44 single crochets across okay I've now crocheted 44 single crochets one thing I should have also mentioned is I did not turn at the end of the round I hope you notice that all of these single crochet rows and there are going to be many that we're going to be crocheting are going to be all crocheted with the front side facing we're not going to be turning to work on the back side of the single crochets unless we're working other stitches that we'll get to later so okay so now we've crocheted 44 single crochets in the next or the 45th stitch we're going to work begin working the corner which is going to be two single crochets chain two and two single crochets all worked in that same space and you can already see the little pointy corner that's forming okay now we are going to single crochet you guessed it in the next 44 stitches and that should bring you to within one stitch of the end of the round after working the next 44 single crochet that brings us to the last single crochet of the round and we're going to work two single crochets chain two and two single crochets in that same space forming another corner and then we join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round and since we are going to change to another color go ahead and fasten off give it a pull and make sure you cut yourself a nice long strand so that would be easy to hide and now we're going to go to our black yarn okay now we're going to start working with the black colored yarn you can tell I did change the backdrop a bit so that you can actually see the yarn instead of adding it here where I'm going to have to hide this strand I decided to go to the other corner to join my yarn in that chain two space and the reason I'm doing this is I don't want all of the yarn to be hidden on one side of the poncho. I want it to be kind of spread out a bit so that, you know, it doesn't all, you know, bunch up on one side. All right, so I did my little slip knot, and now I'm going to chain one. And working in that chain two space, I'm going to work two double crochets. I'm going to slide it over here just so there's going to be room. Chain two. And two more single crochets. I hope I said single crochets the first time. That's what I should have said. Okay, now there is a stitch right here that is our first stitch. And sometimes it tends to get hidden when you put all of this into the stitch before. So make sure you don't forget that stitch because that's an important part of your stitch count. And we're just going to single crochet in each stitch until we get to the next corner. And notice that I'm crocheting on top of this loose strand. Um, this is going to save a lot of time later, and I think it's a good way to hide that extra strand. So go ahead and single crochet all the way until you get to the next corner. After working all the way to the chain two corner, go ahead and work those two single crochets, chain two, and two more single crochets in that chain two corner. Now do be careful that, that you don't skip the first stitch. The first stitch as we single crochet across to the next corner is right here, okay? It's easy to just go over that stitch. Some people call it a hidden stitch. Make sure you use it because that's gonna greatly help to increase our stitch count, which is what we're you know trying to do as we go across. So go ahead and work that all the way across working one single crochet in each single crochet until you get to the next corner. Once you've crocheted all the way to the next corner, which was where we joined our yarn, make sure that you do work in each single crochet here. Now we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Slip stitch. I'm going to give it a little tug there so that you don't accidentally work in that join. And go ahead and and fasten off. I'm going to go ahead and get my scissors here and leave a generous strand and go ahead 
and pull that through. Now we're ready to change to our white yarn. Now for the next round, which is round number four, um, it says to join um, in any chain two space. Now since I finished on this side, I'm going to go ahead and join in this chain two space here. I'm going to go ahead and do my little slip knot. Okay, and then bring it through and then do my one chain, just minimizes the size of the stitch here. And I'm going to do two single crochets, chain two, and two single crochets, one, and two. I know this is going to be hard to see um, with you know these different colors here, but don't forget the first stitch. It's a little hidden, so you need to go ahead and grab it. And I am going to go ahead and work over this tail as I do my first several stitches just so I don't have to worry about hiding it later. It's going to be a lot of um, threads to hide if we don't work them into our work right now. And I think that's probably going to be enough right there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this back a bit. Very careful to trim the excess and not my stitches. So go ahead and we're just going to repeat row number three again, which we just put a single crochet in each stitch around. When I get to the corner here, I am going to work two single crochets, chain two and two single crochets. And I'm going to come all the way around the other side and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch here and I will show you that join next. At the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch. Make sure that you've crocheted in all of the stitches there. Join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Go ahead and pull a little bit tight so that, that again, that, that loop is not worked in accidentally. Go ahead and give it a, um, a chain and a tug and cut yourself a generous. There you go. Generous piece of yarn. Now we're ready to go on to color number two. And just like I did the last time, I'm going to join in the opposite end of where I ended. This will just kind of help spread, you know, the yarn uh, change, a little bit extra yarn there out a little more evenly. So join in any chain two corner and we are going to repeat that same single crochet road, row yet again. So go ahead and join and we're going to work two single crochets, one, two, chain two, and two single crochets. One, two, it's all worked in that chain two space. And as we did before, we're going to be careful that we don't miss any stitches here. So this hidden single crochet that tends to hide away, I'm going to work my yarn in there as well. Make sure you get that stitch and the next one and go ahead and single crochet all the way across the row till you get to this chain two corner. And then when you get to this corner, go ahead and do the same thing. Sing two single crochets, chain two, two single crochets, and then crochet all the way back. And I will show you the join. At the end of row five, we're just gonna join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round, just like we've been doing for the last few rows. Go ahead and pull that a little tight, give it a chain and a tug and get the handy dandy scissors, cut the thread. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a two round assignment. We're going to do this again, but we're first gonna use the white color and then we're gonna use the, the black color. So in other words, round six is gonna be done in white and then round seven in black. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those off camera because it's the same thing. I'm gonna be joining in the chain two space and uh, working the two single crochets, chain two, two single crochets, single crochet all the way across to the next corner, etc. So go ahead and do those two rows again with the white color and then with the black. So after completing rows six and seven, one row with the white and one row with the black, let's, we're going to return now to color number one. So go ahead and work your little slip knot 
and then we're going to join this with a chain to the chain two space and just like we've been doing go ahead and do two single crochets chain two and two single crochets in that chain two corner and then work a single crochet in each stitch all the way to the next corner just like we've been doing but at the end of this round once you come all the way around back here do not disconnect i'm going to show you how to continue on to round nine because we're actually going to do two rows or rather two rounds with this color this time at the end of round eight we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round and go ahead and leave this kind of loosely because we're going to actually be working in that as part of this single crochet when we come around okay and then we're going to do another slip stitch in that single crochet and again we will work over that when we um, come around at the end of this next round and then slip stitch into the chain two chain one and then we're back to where we started go ahead and do two single crochets chain two and two single crochets and we're going to complete this round just the way we've been doing a repeat of round number three so go ahead and give this uh, second round with this um, color number one and work it around and I will show you the join and we will be changing to a different stitch after this it'll be really fun at the end of round nine we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch as we've been doing and go ahead and give it a chain and we're going to also trim the yarn again and give that a tug now we are ready to go back to color number two which in this case is the yellow and rounds 10 and 11 we're going to be working what we call the arrow stitch so I'm going to go to the, the other end you can start in any of the chain two spaces but I like as I said before alternating just you know for the hiding of the loose strand thing and go ahead and do your slip knot okay and we're going to do a chain with that and actually go ahead and do two more chains so we have a chain three and this does count as a double crochet and then we're going to work um, a double crochet one more double crochet here and you guessed it chain two and then two double crochets one and two and that's what we're going to do in your other quarter a uh, corner actually um, with this chain three which acts as a double crochet in the other corner we'll actually have two real double crochets chain two and two double crochets now to do this stitch it is quite quite interesting um, we're going to start off by skipping the first three stitches one two three we're going to skip those and we're going to work a treble crochet in the next stitch just like that now working behind this treble crochet we're going to double crochet in each of the skip stitches now don't forget that first stitch is a little bit tricky to find it's that little hidden stitch it tends to get hidden behind the, the corner stitches so we do double crochets in those three stitches that we skipped okay and that's pretty much what we're going to do all the way across until we get to the next corner skip the next three stitches that have not been worked one two three treble crochet in the next stitch and then working behind this stitch we're going to double crochet in each of the three stitches that we skipped one two and three just like that so go ahead and work that all the way across I'll do one more time for you okay the stitches that we haven't used make sure that you don't count this one because we've already used that for a treble crochet do you see that so one two three the three stitches we haven't used we skip those treble crochet in the next stitch and then double crochet 
in the three stitches that we skipped. Okay, I'll do it one more time for you because this might actually be a new stitch for some of you. Skip three, one, two, three, treble crochet, in that next stitch, working behind the treble crochet, double crochet, and the three skipped stitches. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work this until I get to the next corner. Okay, just to show you, I've worked this arrow stitch all the way to the corner, and the numbers do work out. Now, I haven't given um, round by round all the numbers. All of that is provided in the pattern, and I encourage you to check that out on my Lovecrafts site. Um, there's a lot of uh, math involved in this, and it might be very helpful for you to you know, follow along with the pattern with the exact stitch count. Now this particular round that we're working on is going to have 160 stitches when we're done. Okay, so now when we get to the corner, now this did work out evenly with the different stitches, we're going to work two double crochets, a chain two, and two more double crochets. One and two. Okay, now we are going to continue working the arrow just the way we did um, starting from the beginning of this round. Skip the first three, one, two, three stitches, treble crochet in that next stitch, and then we're going to go back working behind that stitch. Make sure you grab that first stitch, which is kind of hidden, and work one double crochet in each of those three skipped stitches. And go ahead and work this all the way to the beginning of the round. And it should work out mathematically, should you end up with extra stitches. Um, hopefully that's not going to happen to you. But if it does, um, usually these things can be worked out by just simply double dipping in a stitch or even skipping a stitch if you need to. I know it's, it's kind of hard to have to do that. Um, but if you need to do it occasionally, I promise you, if it's just one stitch here, one stitch there, um, it'll just be a secret between us. I mean, nobody is going to really know that. Um, I, I just, it makes me sad when I hear people just rip out complete projects because they're off by one stitch. Um, I've always been a one to kind of fix that as I go. But um, of course, if it's, you know, 10 or 15 stitches, you definitely got to do something about that. So go ahead and just finish this all the way to the beginning of the round. Okay, now that we've worked the arrow row one all the way around, we're going to join to the top of this chain three, just like this, the slip stitch. Now we're going to do something we haven't done yet. We're going to turn. We're going to work with the back side facing. So, so far everything's been done with the front side facing. Uh, for these special stitches, we are going to be turning, okay? So we're going to chain um, three, and that does serve as a double crochet. And now we're going to work round two of the arrow stitch. And the way we do this is very similar to what we've been doing. We're going to um, skip the first three stitches, one, two, three, and those are just the double crochets. And then we're going to treble crochet in the next stitch. And that stitch that you treble in should be the treble stitch that we worked from the previous round. Now working in front of this stitch, Instead of working behind, working in front, we're going to double crochet in those three stitches that we skipped. Okay, now this is, um, right now we have the back side facing us, so um, I'll, I'll show the, the other side in just a second. Let's do this a couple times. Skip the next three stitches, treble crochet in the next stitch, which happens to be the top of the treble crochet from the last round, and then double crochet in the next three stitches. And do that again. Skip the next three double crochets and then treble crochet in the next stitch and then working in front of that stitch double crochet in those three stitches that we just skipped. Okay, let's show you the front side show you what we're making here. So now you can see there is an arrow here. Do you see that? 
that's what we're doing and this would be of course the front side facing it's one of my favorite stitches in case you follow any of my other patterns uh, i just love the texture i love the quickness I just of crocheting i just you know like everything about it okay so i'll do one more for you skip the next three treble crochet in the next stitch which happens to be a treble and then double crochet in the three stitches that we just skipped okay so make sure that you're doing trebles when you're supposed to do trebles and double crochets when you do double crochet after working that all the way across the row we have two unworked double crochets go ahead and work a double crochet in each of those stitches and that brings us to the chain two corner and we're going to work two double crochets a chain two one two and then two more double crochets worked in that chain two space okay and let me go ahead and show you what this looks like from the other side this is um from the front side i just want you to see just how lovely this stitch is it really is a nice pronounced change to all the color work that's going on here and that's going to be repeated in this project okay so now we are going down the other side go ahead and double crochet in those two stitches these are not part of the arrow stitch and we're going to skip the next three stitches one two three and treble crochet in that next stitch and just like we've been doing uh, working in front of that stitch double crochet in those three stitches that we skipped okay I'll do this one more time skip three stitches treble crochet in the next stitch and then we're going to double crochet in the three stitches that we skip but we're going to work in front of that treble crochet so that the arrow is on the front side okay so i'm going to have you work that all the way to the very end and when you get to the end we're going to double crochet in these two stitches that are not part of the arrow stitch then we're going to do another corner which is two double crochet chain two two double crochets in this space here and then double crochet and then we are going to join with a slip stitch because this chain also serves as a double crochet in our stitch count for this round so go ahead and finish that just so there's no doubt i'm going to go ahead and step you through this corner we're going to double crochet in those ones in each of those two double crochets that are not part of the arrow stitches and then when we get to the chain two space we work two double crochets chain two and then two more double crochets okay that leaves us uh, one double crochet here to crochet in two and then this chain three serves as a double crochet and we're going to join to the top of that let me make sure i get the hold on a second one two three i was about to join it to the treble crochet but i'm going to join it to the top the first chain of that chain three okay so now we are going to fasten off so go ahead and give it a chain give it a tug and get out your scissors so we can cut a strand there and so um, what you can do is go ahead and work these in i'm going to go ahead and do that i'm going to um, go ahead and work these in into my work so that they're not dangling any further but let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so far so this is the beginning the beginning of our poncho okay i think it's looking pretty good and i really like the way this yarn is is working out Okay, now I have an assignment for you. We're going to be working the next two rows the exact same way that we worked rounds, I'm sorry, I should have said rows before, um, rounds seven and eight where we worked with the red, so, or color number one. So we're gonna go ahead and join in any chain two. I'll go ahead and do this as I talk. It's just as easy to do it as it is to explain it. So I'm gonna go ahead and and join as I talk um, go ahead and join color number one in that chain two space work two single crochets chain two 
and two single crochets. I'm going to try to bring this strand around to the back. Okay, and now I'm going to um, to work one single crochet in each stitch across, just like we've been doing um, until we got to the arrow stitch. So we're back, back to basically replicating this color scheme here. So go ahead and work this for the next two rounds. That would be rounds 12 and 13. And then this is what I'm going to have you do, the little assignment, and then I'll show you um, what I have in a few minutes. After you work two rounds, like we've been doing, when you get to the corner, make sure you do two single crochet, chain two, two single crochets. That's the only thing different you do um, for the corners. And then you um, will join the yarn at the end of this round. And just like I did down here, um, slip stitch to the next stitch, slip stitch to the chain two, um, chain one, and then do another corner in the corner, which is two single crochet, chain two, two single crochets. Um, go all the way around and then you can join and fasten off the yarn there and then you're going to join the black yarn and do a round and fasten off then the uh, white yarn and then fasten off at the end of that round and then color number two and then color the white color and then the black color so we're basically we are repeating this color section here so go ahead and do those rows and then I will show you what I have after completing rounds a 12 through 18 and by the way if I say row I really mean round I, I get these words mixed up sometimes so I thank you in advance for being gracious towards me in that um, well anyway so we have round 12 13 in color number one round 14 15 16 which is color number two 17 and round number 18 now it's time for us to start round number 19. We're going back, here we go. We're going back to color number one. So whatever color that is for your favorite sports team, go ahead and let's get back to that color. And we are going to join in the chain two, two space again. So go ahead and make your little slip knot and pull that through. And then we're gonna actually chain three, one, Two, three, and this chain three actually counts as a double crochet. What we are going to do now is we're transitioning to using um, the Celtic weave, and before we can do that, we're going to crochet a, a round of double crochets all the way around. So go ahead and make another double crochet. Again, this chain serves as a double crochet. And then another double crochet, chain two, just like we did for the arrow. And then two more double crochets in that chain two corner space. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work straight double crochets all the way around the perimeter or all the way around the poncho. So go ahead and do that. Um, when you get to the other corner, just like we did for the arrow stitch, go ahead and work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in that corner space. And I will show you the join and the begin of the Celtic weave. At the end of round 19, we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the top chain and I am going through two strands there. That's just my personal preference. Do a slip stitch. And again, this chain does act as a double crochet. Okay, now instead of chaining, we are going to actually slip stitch in the next stitch, and then we're gonna slip stitch to the chain two, okay? I am going to chain three, one, two, three. This is the start of rounds 20 through 27. For these um, eight rounds, we're going to be using the Celtic weave stitch. Now, if you've never done this before, I'm not trying to scare you or anything. Um, this can be a little challenging. So if you need more practice on this, you know, feel free to practice the stitch. I have a separate video on this stitch should you need more tutorial help. Okay, so for just the corner, we're gonna do our double crochets like we've been doing. 
So do one double crochet, again, that goes with this chain, so that really counts as two double crochets. We're going to chain two, and then we're going to do two more double crochets in this chain two space. One, and two. All right, now here we go. This is going to be the Celtic weave, and these are going to be post stitches. In other words, we're going to be wrapping our hook around the stitch rather than going in through the top. All right, so I'm going to just dig in here. We're going to skip these two stitches, the first two, and we're going to do front post treble crochets. We wrap the hook two times. Let me go ahead and do that again. Wrap the hook twice for these trebles. All of the um, Celtic weave stitches, these next um, eight rows, are going to be either front post trebles or back post trebles. Well, of course, except for these double crochets we just did here. So skip two, wrap the hook around that next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's the front post treble. Do that again in the next stitch. Okay, now working in front of these last two stitches, we are going to work front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. So we start with the one furthest away to the right or to the left if you're watching the left-handed video and then the next one just like so. And that's pretty much what we are going to do all the way across the row. Skip these two, front post treble, and the next two stitches. One in each stitch of course. Okay, so we're making these uh, kind of like crisscrosses. Working in front of these two stitches, go to the stitches that have not been worked, the one furthest away, and then the second stitch that we skipped. I'm going to do that again so that you can so do it a couple more times because I know this is going to hang some of you up um, and if it if it does I am really sorry um, try not to get too frustrated with it um, well let's just go with it skip two it's actually not as hard as you would think um, front post treble in that next stitch now working in front of these two stitches go back to the two that you skipped and it's really important that you have the correct stitch count for this because this is a multiple of four um, for this particular stitch um, and again check your stitch count the stitch count is getting quite high at the end of round 19 we had 232 stitches um, at the end of this round we're going to have 240 stitches okay skip two so that's a lot of counting um, and you don't have to count at the end of each row. I mean, as long, or around rather, um, but as long as you're putting a stitch in each stitch, you should be fine. Okay. If, if that's a hard skill for you, if you are still a beginner and you're still having a hard time putting one stitch in each stitch, this probably isn't the project for you. It's probably a little late to tell you that, but, um, it is advertised as an intermediate um, pattern, but if you're a new beginner and you've got your skills down, the beginning skills down, and you want to grow them, this is a great project for you. Okay, so working in front of these two, we're going to front post treble in these two stitches. Okay, so just go ahead and work that all the way across until you get to the next corner. After working all the way across before we get to that chain two space, I wanted to show you the last four stitches just for the sake of clarity. Um, skip those two stitches and front post treble crochet and the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble on the two stitches that we skipped. Okay. And then we get to the corner, and you've done this already, but just, just again to be clear, two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets in that chain two space. And then we get right on back on track to working that Celtic weave. Skip two stitches, front post treble 
in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches we just did, go ahead and front post treble crochet in those two stitches that we skipped. Okay, so just continue that all the way across the row and I will, let's just take a peek here of where we're headed with this. And after you do the last four stitches, then we're just going to connect with a slip stitch to the top of that chain and I'll show that to you when we get to that point. Okay, that brings us to the last four stitches and notice that one of them is a chain which is treated just like a double crochet. So we skip these two stitches, front post treble in the next double crochet which is actually a chain three pretending to be a double crochet and then we work in front of these two front post treble and the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, and now we're going to join with the slip stitch to the top of that chain three, just like that. Okay, now we are going to turn to work with the back side facing and go ahead and chain one, two, three stitches. So after the chain three, I'm going to show you something a little bit different. We're going to start this um, back side or our row two of the Celtic weave um, a little differently than what we normally would. Normally we would just start with these first two, but I'm going to have you skip four. We're going to work it kind of like in the round. We're going to skip one, two, three, four stitches, and then we're going to do back post treble in the next two stitches, which is right here. So let me show you this again. We skip the first four stitches and then the two stitches that are here, we're going to back post treble in each of those two stitches. Now working in front of these stitches as seen from the front, so we're going to kind of come around this way. Let me show you, it's going to be in front of these. We're going to come around and these two stitches that are underneath, they're a little bit hidden. Um, and you're going to have to use the nerves and the thumb and tall man here to find these stitches for you. But when you do that, we're going to do a back post treble around each of those stitches individually. And that's what we're going to do all the way across. We're going to, now we're going to, actually that was the first step was to skip four and then we begin the crossing. Now after we begin the crossing, we're going to skip two, one, two. And then we're going to go to the next two stitches, which are right here. We're going to do back post treble around each of these. And then working in front of these two as seen from the front. Okay, this the, the, the um, hook's going to go around here. And again, use these fingers to feel for these two stitches that are kind of hidden. Um, this Celtic weave are, is literally a woven stitch. These stitches really do connect with each other and are woven, um, not just in word, but you know, in reality they really are. So, um, so now we're going to do that again. Skip the next two stitches, back post treble, and the next two stitches. And again, I have another video on my channel should you need to take a look at that just to get a better idea of what I'm doing. So again, I'm going to take and I find these two stitches that were skipped. You can see them there. And my thumb actually, and this finger, like I said before, actually helps to guide my hook to tell me um, where the stitch is. And I'm trying to show it to you as well. Okay. I'm going to do this for you one more time. Skip two stitches, back post treble, and the next two. Working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side. We're going to work around these two. Make sure your hook goes towards the back. Okay, like this. And I'll show you what it looks like coming in from the front like this. I promise you this is the most challenging part of this project, but if you've already worked with this stitch before, then it's 
you know, not going to be a problem for you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and work this all the way across, and let me show you the front side of what it's starting to look like. See? Um, and the reason why we actually skipped four and started over here is we're going to be adding stitches in the the following rows and we're going to actually work the Celtic weave into some of these new stitches that are coming into play and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so go ahead and finish um, all the way to the corner and I'll show you how to work the corner because I want to make sure that you understand you know with clarity um, how this stitch works in this project. Okay, now that we got to the chain near the chain two corner, you see we have four stitches, um, two stitches um, that's part of one of the Celtic weave crosses, and then you have these two extra stitches over here. We're going to go ahead and since we skipped those stitches at the beginning, we're going to work these two stitches into this pattern. So the pattern's actually going to grow a little bit. Um, as far as the Celtic weave goes and it's you don't have to worry too much about this It's just discontinue what you're doing skip two stitches and then just include these as the next two stitches just like this back post treble crochet over those double crochets that were just sitting there and like we've been doing all along um, working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side we're going to find these two hidden stitches here and and back post treble. Well, let me try that one again. Back post treble over those other two stitches that were just skipped. Okay, now that brings us to the chain two and you know what to do here. We're going to put two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets in that chain two space. Okay, now we're going to skip the next two stitches which are just um, the simple double crochets, but we are going to include those into the Celtic weave and I'll show you the other side in just a second. So skip these two stitches, back post treble, in the next two stitches, which are part of that Celtic weave stitch already. Working in front of these two as seen from the front side, we're going to come around and use those double crochets and work back post, I'm sorry, back post treble crochets. If I said double, I meant treble. My head knows what I want to say, but sometimes the tongue doesn't always cooperate. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. Okay, and we just continue skip the next two stitches here, back post treble, and the next next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, as seen from the front side here, I'm going to go ahead and find the two stitches that I'm going to work around and let the thumb kind of guide the hook there. Okay. And so there you have it, and just continue this on all the way till you get to the join, and I'll show you what to do on the join because it's going to be a little different there as well. Okay, so let me show you from this side what this should look like. Okay. All right, so go ahead and finish to the join, and then I will show that to you. Now I want to work um, the area coming in. We're still working that Celtic weave. Um, so we're going to skip the next two stitches, and then the next two stitches, we're going to work those two double crochets just like we did at the other corner. Okay, back post treble there, and back post treble in the next double crochet. And then again, working in front of those two stitches as seen from the front, we're going to work around these two stitches. I know I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but hopefully it'll be helpful to you all if this is a stitch that's kind of new to you. And again, if you need to slow me down, uh, you know which button to hit. I explained that earlier. Okay, so after you do that, we're going to do those four, actually two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets worked in that chain two corner. 
Now we're not done. Remember at the very beginning we skipped four stitches instead of two and this is how this comes into play. We're going to pick up these other two stitches. They're right down here. Okay, one, two, they're a little bit lower, okay, because this up here is the second row of the Celtic weave. Okay, so once we do that, now we need to do these other two stitches as well. So working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to work a back post treble over those two double crochets. Okay, now we need to connect in. And as you recall, here is the chain three that we started with. This is where we are. And so go ahead and connect actually to the first treble crochet of the round with a slip stitch. I'm going to turn and show you what we're doing and how it should look at the corner. Okay, so we're just continuing this Celtic weave and it is going to continue into these stitches um, in the corners as we go along. Okay, so that ends um, row around rather number 21. So we're going to chain. Actually, go ahead. Let's go ahead and turn. And make sure I get this so the camera focuses on what I want it to see. We're going to chain three. One, two, three. And we've turned to work the other side. And again, we're going to skip four. One, two, three, four. Make sure you do that just at the start of this round. And we're going to start by working in this double crochet right here. Okay, we skip four and then we front post treble in the next two stitches. And then working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble and the two stitches that were skipped right here. Of course we skipped four, these other two as well. We're not working in those until the very end. And and one one reason why I do this, let me, let me show you real quickly here, is that it tends to conceal the turning chain completely for these rounds. We just want the Celtic weave to be featured and we don't want to be featuring our turning chains or anything like that. Okay, so now we come to the chain two corner already. Go ahead and work two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets right in there. Okay, I know I say okay a lot. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'll try not to, to do that too much. Um, so now we're going to skip these two stitches and front post treble in the next two stitches working in front of these last two treble crochets go ahead and front post treble in each of these double crochets that are in that corner okay just like that and now we're just going to continue this all the way around just like we did um, two rows ago, but I'll go ahead and I will show you the corner when we get to that. So um, I did the two front post stitches. Now the two stitches that we skipped, we're going to work front post treble crochets in each of those. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So this is what we have. Um, and this right here right this area here started the the third Celtic weave it's actually the fourth row if you count the foundation um, and let me show you quickly how you can count um, the Celtic weave part would be one two or for counting over here one two three you count where the stitches cross so I'll go ahead and finish that to the next corner and I'll guide you through that next corner after going all the way to the corner I'm going to show you the corner again we're going to skip these two stitches, front post treble, in those two double crochets that were added in the previous corner, and then working in front of these two stitches, we're going to work 
those um, front post trebles around these two stitches. Okay, and that brings us to the chain two corner itself where we work two double crochets, chain two, let's move this out of the way so the camera doesn't focus on that, and then two more double crochets. Alright, now we start down the other side. We're going to skip two stitches. This is just like what we did before. Front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in these um, double crochets, one in each. Okay, and let's go ahead and just continue the pattern. Skip two, front post treble. Oops. In the next two stitches. Working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in these two stitches that we skipped. Let's pause and take a look at this corner. It should look just like the other corner. Okay, so go ahead and work this all the way across, and then I will all the way across till we get to the join, and I will show you the join. Now notice that the join is going to be before we get to the corner, okay, and which is the way it's supposed to be, and um, after that I will show you how to continue the next row. To end round 22, we still have these stitches to connect and the ones here, and I'll go ahead and do these last two. These are the um, okay front post treble crochet, because we skipped these two down here, and then front post treble crochet in that next stitch. Working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in these two stitches that we just skipped. And then after that, we're going to join. Here's the turning chain that we started with. But we're going to join to the first treble crochet just like that. And if you take a look at it, and go ahead and pull this up, um, the Celtic weave should pretty much be seamless through here. Okay? So that ends row number, I'm sorry, round number 22. Now to do round number 23. We're going to start just like we have the others with the chain three and we are going to continue to skip four at the beginning. One, two, three, four. We're going to skip these four stitches and then work back post treble crochet in the next two stitches. And again, working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side, we're going to go ahead, let me see if I can show you a little bit better. We're going to be working around these two stitches, so we come around the back side and do two more back post treble crochets. And we're just going to continue that until we get to the next corner and let me go ahead and let me finish these stitches and then I want to look at the corner with you ahead of time. It's going to be the same as it was on row number 21. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that. Now let's go ahead and just look ahead a little bit to this. Okay, so when we get to this section we're going to go ahead and we're going to work these two stitches and then we're going to work these two stitches exactly the way we did with row number 21 and then again we form the corner two double crochets chain two two double crochets there and then when we turn here we're going to do these two we're going to skip these two double crochets we're going to do two back post trebles here and they're going to come around and work these two stitches working back post treble crochets just exactly like we did on 
round number 21. So go ahead and finish this round and I will show you the connection um, at the end. Let me show you the end of round 23. Um, we have just these, these two left. These are the first two of the four stitches we st um, skipped at the beginning of the round. Go ahead and do, um, we've actually just skipped these two. And just for the record, again, we're not working in this turning chain for these Celtic weave um, rounds. So go ahead and do those two back post treble crochets. And then working in front of these, as seen from the front side, we're going to bring our hook back behind. And we're going to do these two stitches that we skipped. All right, now we're ready to join. And we're going to join to the first um, back post treble of the round, right like that with a slip stitch. Let's go ahead and turn and see what we have. Okay, so this is what we should have already. So let me show you uh, if uh, a quick way to count these. I may have already done this, but I'll do it again. Um, so this was um, round number 20, 20, that's right, 21. 22 and round 23. So where these X's are, you can count where the X's cross. So 20, 21, 22, 23. And now we're ready to begin round 24. And this will be with the front side facing. Go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And just like we started the other ones, we're going to start by skipping four stitches. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to start right over here. And I'll take you through the corner again. I know this is redundant, but you know some people, some people like that. And you know it takes me more than once or twice to to learn something, and I have no problem reviewing. That's just the best way to learn. Okay, so now working in front of these two, we're going to front post treble in these two stitches here that are hidden. Okay. Now we're going to do this one more time. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, which are these two hidden trebles. And then we're going to front post treble in these two stitches, these two double crochets that are part of that corner from the previous round. And again, working in front of those stitches. You'll probably hear this in your sleep tonight. Hope not. <laughs> um, go ahead and front post treble in those two hidden stitches. Brings us to our chain two corner, and you should know what to do at this point. Two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets. Let's get that little piece of fuzz out of there. One and two. And then let's go ahead and skip the next two doubles, double crochets that will become part of this Celtic weave. And we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Notice the stitches are always leaning this direction that you begin with. Working in front of these two stitches, front post treble in those two double crochets, one at a time. Okay, let's pause and get that other thing out of there. So this is what you should have at this point. Again, this is round number 24. I'm going to do two more, just, just one more um, set here. Skip these two stitches and then front post treble. And you're going to just continue this all the way around and completing the corner just the way I showed you here. So you do have that one corner at the other end. Go ahead and working in front of those two, going to find these two hidden stitches. Okay, and just continue this all the way around. Now I'm going to have you go ahead and um, complete round 24. Then you're going to do round 25, that's with the back side facing, round 26 with the front side facing, and then round 27 with the back side facing. These are just going to be repeats of um, rounds 22 and 23. Okay, 
or uh, yeah, that, that's right. The even rows will be a repeat of, with the front side facing, will be a repeat of round 22, and with the back side facing will be a repeat of round 23. So go ahead and finish that. When you are done, you should have a total of eight rounds with the Celtic weave. You should be able to count one, two, three, four, and all the way up to eight, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that and then I'll show you what I have when I'm finished. After joining to that first treble crochet at the end of round 27, let's go ahead and turn and let me show you what you should have at this point. And I'm gonna show you how I like to count these rows because they can be a little bit tricky. Okay, this was row number 19. Row 20 is where this first cross is. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and then 27. Okay, now if you were one of these people that would like your poncho to be extra long um, on your arms and, you know, maybe even, you know, covering them. Um, this is where you're going to need to add some extra rounds. I would suggest adding in um, sets of two. And as you can see, um, I'll go ahead and get my measuring tape out. Using my yarn um, that I'm using um, and using a size I hook, um, and if you have proper gauge, you're going to add about, let's go ahead and try to do this proper like, okay, you're going to add about an inch and a half for every two rows that you add. So if that's something you want to do, this is the time to do it, okay? But I'm going to um, go on ahead, and I've already turned to have the front side facing. I'm going to chain two. So after this chain two, we are going to work front post, I'm going to get this out of the way, front post double crochets, not trebles, but double crochets in each stitch. So go ahead and do that to the corner. And as you do, make sure that you do have four front post double crochets for every um, four stitches that are crossed, we're two and two, okay? So make sure that we don't um, forget these these hidden stitches back here that would be very easy to do so I'm going to work my front post double crochets in each stitch until I get to that chain two corner now that we are approaching the corner go ahead and work front post double crochets on those two double crochets that way it looks nice and uniform and then now for the chain two just like you've been doing go ahead and work two double crochets, a chain two, and then two more double crochets. I'm gonna go ahead and show this once I get it done. Okay, go ahead and move that out of the way. So two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in that chain two corner, and then go ahead and do those front post double crochets over those two stitches, and then Again, go ahead and one front post double crochet in each stitch. So when you get to the other corner, just do the very same thing and I'll show you the join at the end of this round. After working that front post double crochet all the way around, we're gonna join, not in the turning chain, but in the first front post double crochet of the round, just like that. And that ends the Celtic weave portion. Okay, now we are going to continue on with, um, let me show you. We are going to do a repeat of these rounds here. Okay, we're going to repeat this. So, but before we do that, we are going to do one more round of single crochet with color number one. So go ahead, chain one, single crochet in that first stitch as joining, and single crochet all the way to the corner. After working a single crochet in each of those stitches, go ahead and in the chain two space here, work two single crochets, chain two, and two more 
single crochets just like we did early on and again don't forget this stitch here that tends to be covered up make sure you slip I'm sorry single crochet into each of these stitches now rather than go through um, these other rounds again I am actually going to give you an assignment so after you complete the round number 29 which is the one we're working on here you're going to fasten off and of course you're going to be fat you know joining and fastening off right here but when you join the new colors make sure that you join in one of the chain two spaces um, that just makes things a whole lot more easier um, so for rounds number 30 through 45 you're going to be repeating rounds 3 through 18 so if you still need stitch support at this stage what I would recommend you do is to back up the video or go back to where um, round number three is is clearly labeled after completing rounds 30 through 45 you should have this section completed Okay, now we are getting very close to finishing our crocheting. So now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to join color number one once again. And we're going to join it where we've been doing it. In the end here, in that chain two section. So we're going to go ahead and join. Make our slip knot. You've done this many times if you've gotten this far already. And we are going to work those two single crochets, chain two, I'm going to slide it there a little bit, and two more single crochets, and then we're going to work single crochets all the way around. And we're going to do this for five rounds. Okay, at the end of each round, simply join with a slip stitch to the um, first stitch of the round and then just continue on like you've been working um, with the single crochet so go ahead and work five rounds um, of color number one and then we're going to fasten off I'm officially done crocheting my poncho let me show you the added five rounds and how this looks Okay, now I'm not finished though because I have a lot of loose strings to hide and as you notice my fabric is not even close to laying flat and I do want to, you know, take a look at that and I want to uh, change that and I'm going to do that in the next video. So the next video is going to be on finishing our poncho. I'm going to be covering how to block this as well as how to add the fringe so it will be all completed okay so take a look at that next video coming out soon and i will see you then god bless bye bye